Yes, I have. I'm a former prisoner and every year since 2009 when I was released, I've written to President Obama asking him to visit a prison, telling him what an important message that would send to both inmates and staff, and telling him about my current work in the Arizona Women's Prison, the very one where I was incarcerated. I basically wrote for my own entertainment. I never expected anyone to read them. On January 3, 2016, I got a call from the White House inviting me to be a guest of the First Lady in her box at the President's final State of the Union address. I was sworn to secrecy until the White House announced the list of guests and, when they did, my phone didn't stop ringing. It seems there are journalists all over the world who watch for that list. A week later I was at the White House. I had a press liaison to help me navigate the press interviews. I had a meeting with Attorney General Loretta Lynch. Imagine me, a former prisoner, meeting with Mrs. Lynch. Yes, it was a little surreal. That night before the State of the Union address, the 23 guests and our plus ones were guests at the White House White for a lovely reception. We toured the beautiful historic rooms and when we looked out the blue room windows to the Washington Monument, it had started to snow. We ended up in the reception hall. There, while a Marine played show tunes on an antique piano, White House staffers mingled with a diverse group of guests, from the president of Microsoft to a 12-year-old who started a program feeding healthy food to the homeless. The networking was punctuated with delicious hors d'oeuvres and champagne. It was going to be a long night, magical, but we needed the sustenance. While at the reception, three young people approached me. Ms. Allen, we're from the Office of Presidential Correspondence and we wanted to meet you. You wrote one of our favorite letters. They read my letter. Later I learned that considering the volume of mail the president gets a week, I won the White House letter lottery. My letter made it through all the sorting, the volunteers, the staff and finally to the office of Elizabeth Olson, the director of the Office Presidential Correspondence. She selects the final 10 letters the president reads every day. My letter wasn't just about me, it was representative of all the voiceless, faceless women and men behind bars. The men President Obama visited within prison were also representative of those same women and men forgotten inside our prisons. My journey to prison gave me a passion and a purpose I never expected. I'm living that purpose now and my letter reflected that. Do you have a passion? Write letters, to the president, the governor, your legislators, the head of companies, hospitals and, most important, the people you love. Real letters on heavy cream paper. Letters have power and give you a voice. Who knows, you might be invited to the White House for the price of a stamp. In 2014, I wrote a letter to President Obama, thanking him for taking the time to speak at my graduation commencement for UC Irvine's graduating class of 2014. He talked extensively about climate change and used this pressing issue as a catalyst to encourage my class to use our newfound knowledge to solve global issues. I graduated with a BS in environmental science and I thought it was so cool that a he talked about something relevant to what I studied and b he gave a shout out for my program, one of the smallest at UCI. I decided to write him a letter to express my gratitude and shared with him that I'll be interning at the South Coast Air Quality Management District following graduation. I didn't think anything would happen after I sent the letter off to the White House. I figured it would either get lost in a pile of mail or at most, I'd get a letter back with the president's electronic signature. A year and a half later, I get a call from the White House I didn't know at the moment, since it was an unknown number. The man on the other end shared with me that my letter was received and read and that I was invited to attend a White House state dinner to honor the President of China, Xi Jinping. I was absolutely floored at this invitation, considering the other attendees would be some of the most well-known tech giants of the world. I immediately said I was interested and less than two weeks later, my mom, my plus one, and I were on our way to Washington, D.C. The night was absolutely surreal. I met the POTUS, FLOTUS, Mark Zuckerberg, Mark Cuban, John Kerry, Ni Yo, just to name a few. The food was amazing and I even sat next to the environmental advisor to the president and we talked about our work in air quality. Though I was one of the youngest to attend, I felt comfortable meeting so many tech CEOs and it certainly helped that everyone responded positively when I shared my story of how I was invited. Mark Cuban even gave me a high five. 
My mom had a blast too and this was definitely one of the biggest things to ever happen to us. Since coming back from the White House, I've shared this story at least 100 times to people of all backgrounds. I know people who've been inspired to write letters to those they look up to, in hopes that maybe they'll get a response as well. One of my personal hobbies is journaling, so writing comes to me naturally. I'm thankful that one letter led to a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Oh and it was two days after I turned 23, so it was definitely one of the best birthday gifts thus far.